I knew Brian since um, I was 15. This is the person I trusted so much. I invited him into my home regularly. We went to prom together. We graduated together. We went to college and we did our internship together. We dated for a year. We were engaged for a year. I really thought I knew Brian. Just a couple nights before I gave birth to our firstborn, I found out that I did not know my husband. So I didn't know the struggles that Brian had had that had been going on for most of his life, started in childhood. These are just problems he already had that were brought into our marriage that I didn't know about regarding sexual impurity. I was first introduced to pornography at a neighbor's house and I was nine years old. And that carried with me throughout my life. That one instance started an addiction for me, changed the way that I view women, saw them more as objects, things to be sexualized and objectified, definitely carried into my marriage in, in the way I viewed my wife. I found myself unable to be present during intimacy, thinking about other people. I was looking at inappropriate content when my wife wasn't around. Just living this double life that no one knew about. My wife certainly didn't know. I wanted to keep that part secret. I didn't want anyone to know that I was anything less than perfect. After just the details of uh, what he was looking at, who he was thinking about, just this stuff, he was very stoic, treated me like every man does this, they just don't tell their wives and you should just be fine with it. That whole six weeks postpartum period, I tried to believe that. This is just something that everybody does, everybody deals with it, it's fine. I tried to minimize my pain, I tried to excuse this behavior. So I had my six week postpartum checkup. My drive to and from my appointment was really the first time I'd been alone since giving birth. And I had just a minute to really let the pain settle in. So I called him on my car at home from the doctor's office. I really cannot express my level of rage and fury and brokenness and abandonment after that six weeks of just trying to put a band-aid over it and move on with my life. So I called Brian on my car at home screaming, I want a divorce. If this is the way that it is, if this is the way Brian's gonna continue our marriage, I want nothing to do with it. Screaming, top of my lungs. I think that's when Brian started to take my pain seriously. I think that phone call helped to see my wife as a person who is hurting, not just a two-dimensional person that's just there for my needs. That was a wake-up call for me. I didn't want to have uh, such a short-lived marriage. I didn't want this to be the end. I had to get past the denial that this wasn't a problem or this was not affecting anyone because it was clearly affecting those closest to me and those who I loved most. And that's when, out of desperation, I called our pastor at the time and explained just really briefly what was going on. He set up a time to get together, was able to talk my wife into coming to sit down with us. And that was the first time I was honest with anyone. We just told them everything that was going on. And they had two groups starting that week. One was Sexual Integrity 101 for the men and Betrayal and Beyond for the women. I was angry when I was led to join a group because I was thinking, I don't have the problem. I didn't do anything wrong. This is his problem, fix him. He's not even sorry, he's stoic. And I was just broken because it was very clear to me that he did not see how degraded I felt. To Brian, it was just also normalized. And for me, I never imagined you could betray someone so deeply. I did not think it was possible. I developed community in Betrayal Beyond. This was my safety zone. This was my, I want to hurt my husband or hurt myself or run away from home. I'm going to make a phone call to one of these women. And they understood my pain. And 
were able to kind of extinguish some of those fires helping me to regulate these emotions. There were times where I felt violent and I was filled with rage and I couldn't cope with the feelings. I had very real feelings that I couldn't make sense of. Joining that group was such a, a wake-up call. The course I went through helped me to make sense of why I had this problem in my life. Own my story helped me to finally be honest and make friendships and connections. This topic of sexual brokenness is not something I felt comfortable telling anyone. I couldn't share it with my family. I didn't have many friends to talk about this with. Especially didn't want to bring it up with anyone I knew from church. After being in a group with these guys, there is a familiarity, people going through the same thing as I am. It's healing. It was a space I needed to be able to talk about these things and process these things. After we joined our groups, really, really I just feel like I found my voice and I had better boundaries in my relationship with Brian, but also in my relationship with everybody around me. I was done being codependent. I was done being a people pleaser. I was done being the funny one, the pretty one, the one who has it all together. I was free to be real and raw. And now that's exactly who I am and who I've stayed. Um, I love that Bashar and Beyond gave me practical tools that I can use in real time in an argument or in real time when I'm feeling sad or lonely or angry. Both of the groups, Betrayal and Beyond and Seven Pillars, are all so heavily based on scripture. It was all supported by scripture. That was really helpful for me too because Jesus was the one place I wanted to run. When I didn't know who my husband was, I had something inside of me like, I don't know who anyone is and the only person who felt safe was Jesus Christ. So since Betrayal and Beyond helped me to find my voice and figure out what I needed to feel safe in this marriage. Brian and I ended up being separated for three months. And that was really hard because we had a newborn, we had a baby, but that was what I needed to feel like my feelings were valid and like I was gonna be respected and taken seriously. And Brian really did, he really did everything that I needed to build trust because at that point it had all been lost and I felt like I was married to a stranger. And so Brian came over every day when I said it, I felt that it was okay to visit our son, which meant a lot to me. He put the effort in his group. He asked me about how my group was going. We shared the information we were learning with one another. Brian asked me out on dates. I saw that he started to value me as a person and I didn't even realize that he hadn't been doing that all along. I did not know what I was missing until Betrayal and Beyond. The, the groups helped me to learn about myself, my childhood, my past, helped to make sense of my behaviors, learn to commit to things and to follow through, to be honest, to be accountable, to be a person of integrity in all areas of my life. All these things helped to translate to being what my wife needed, someone who is gonna consider her and meet her needs, uh, a dad who's present and who can engage with, it, with them and get rid of my selfish, self-centered lifestyle and to start considering others. During that first year, we grew a lot, matured a lot, we grew in wisdom, we grew in the Lord. It was such a flourishing time, even though it was very painful and very hard. I won't go into detail of how many episodes there were of triggers and all these sort of things, but it was so good and the Lord was with us every step of the way. Our second year, we both led a group of our own. Now we've just completed our third year in Betrayal and Beyond and Seven Pillars, and we are ready to go into our fourth year because that very first year, when everything came crumbling down, I had read it takes three to five years for a man to rewire his brain to stop the neural pathways in your brain to objectify and sexualize women and to fantasize. I said, Brian, this is three to five years. You owe me five. You're giving me five. So we're going into our fourth year and there will be a fifth. We have learned how to have a productive time addressing these things. We have just been so equipped with tools and resources 
encouraged in our relationship with God to continue growing. And, and specifically for me, this was such a hindering block in my relationship with God. This was something that prevented me from having a relationship with God, this life that I had had in secret. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that no marriage is ever gonna be perfect, but I enjoy my husband. <laughs> Brian is not the man that I married. I love him so much. The Lord blessed us so much with pain I cannot possibly express that he turned into a masterpiece. I look forward every day to spending time with my husband. We are productive when we argue we find resolve or we don't go to bed. We find resolve or we don't engage with our kids yet. We put each other first. First it's God, then it's each other, and then it's our children.